Football, or soccer in some countries, is one of the most popular sports in the world. There are countless stories about the game and the people involved who created a legacy and the culture around it. In this video, we're going to talk about the weirdest football match I've ever heard of. It was a game that was played in the Caribbean back in the 90s. Barbados faced Granada in the National Stadium of St. Michael in Barbados. During the qualification stage of the 1994 Caribbean Cup, Group 1 was formed by three teams, and only the first place winner qualified to go on the final tournament hosted in Trinidad and Tobago. The CFU who organized the tournament decided to add a weird rule to the competition to prevent ties. If a match ends in a tie, extra time will be played with a golden goal rule. This rule is uncommon for this kind of tournaments, but understandable for the context. However, the CFU added another particular rule. That golden goal scored in extra time will be counted as double. Yeah, a single goal during extra time meant the end of the match, and it would have been reported as two goals in the match report. With these two rules firmly in place, the teams were sent to the kickoff. First, Puerto Rico beat Barbados, then Grenada beat Puerto Rico, scoring the golden goal in extra time. So the official result for that match was 2-0. No. And finally, the last match of the group stage was Barbados against Grenada. And this match is certainly the weirdest, let me tell you why. If Grenada won, they would qualify to the final tournament. If they lost, due to a one goal difference, they would advance anyway. But if Barbados won for a two goal difference, Barbados would qualify. The match started and Barbados scored two goals, achieving what they needed. But in the 83rd minute, Grenada scored. It was a 2-1 in Grenada's favor. And now Grenada was qualifying. Now remember, Barbados needed to win by a two goal difference in order to advance. A win with their current assaults was useless for them. Barbados had only six minutes left to score a goal. It was a rough situation, and here's where things got weird. They scored an own goal and put the score at 2-2. No joke. You can see it here for yourself. Terry Seeley, the defender, just deliberately took a shot into his own net. But why? Well, they needed a two-goal difference, and for them, it was easier to go to that 30-minute extra time and score that double-value golden goal than trying to score that goal in the few minutes left. All of this according to tournament rules. After that, the Barbados players went to defend both the goals in the field. But why? At this point, Grenada realized what their opponent was doing. So just after the slick move by Barbados, they tried to score their own own goal, or simply a goal in the Barbados' net. It didn't matter which net the ball entered. Remember, by losing with one goal, they'll be advancing just like they would if they won the match. It was insanity. Grenada had not scored a goal when the final whistle sounded, so extra time started. And during extra time, this happened. Barbados scored, and people went nuts. Because that goal was not a normal one, it was that golden goal with double value, so they won the match for a two-goal difference, enough to advance to the final tournament in Trinidad and Tobago, when in reality, they only won the game by one goal. Of course, the team was mad, and the coach said this in the press conference. I feel cheated. The person who came up with these rules must be a candidate for a madhouse. The game should never be played with so many players running around the field, confused. Our players did not even know which direction to attack, our goal or their goal. I have never seen this happen before. In football, you are supposed to score against your opponents to win, not for them. But what would happen if the CFU had not implemented these rules and everything was the same as the rest of the round robin tournaments? Without that, Barbados wouldn't have had to create that madness in the pitch. Well, sadly for Mr. Clarkson, Grenada would finish at the bottom of the group with only one point. Barbados and Puerto Rico would be tied in the first position, with Barbados likely to advance because they scored more goals in the tournament than Puerto Rico. Remember that the three points and two goals conceded to Granada were after defeating Puerto Rico in extra time. Months later in the final tournament, with ties being allowed, Barbados tied 1-1 against Dominica, lost 2-0 against Trinidad and Tobago, and tied 2-2 against Guadalupe, finishing third in their group without advancing to the semifinals. At this point, you can assume that the players involved in that match were amateurs, but not all of them actually were. The goalkeeper for Barbados, Horace Stout, who received the own goal, played in the Scottish Football League for a couple of years. After that, neither national team has gotten any major success. Barbados reached the semi-final round of the CONCACAF qualifiers for the 2002 World Cup, 
finishing in the bottom of the group, but achieving an impressive win against Costa Rica, which ended up qualifying to the World Cup in Korea, Japan. And Granada qualified for the CONCACAF Gold Cup in 2009 and 2011 without earning a single point and conceding 25 goals in the six games they were in. And this year, they just won their group in the CONCACAF Nations League, earning a spot in the 2021 Gold Cup. By the way, Barbados got that name from the aspect of the trees found on the island. If you want to know more about country names, one of our oldest videos on this channel talks about that. Go and check it out. In a couple of seconds, you'll see a square show up on the screen. Click it to watch all of our past videos. And as always, please click the logo of our channel to subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, push that like button and leave us a comment with another weird sports story you've heard of. Till next time, stay fresh.